talking about Java programming today, specifically an overview of classes and objects. So let's get started. The first question you want to ask is what is a class? And you can think of a class as being like a factory. or a blueprint, or a cookie cutter. And the reason that we talk about it this way is that what a class really does is describe how to create objects. So it's really a set of instructions. You might think of it as it being almost also like a recipe. And it tells you how to make a specific kind of object. So that leads us then, of course, to the question, what is an object? And an object is a specific thing that we create using a class. Uh, it's, often called some, it's often called an instance. So if you imagine that you have a cookie cutter to make gingerbread man, then the cookie cutter is your class, and when you make five gingerbread men, you've made five instances or five objects based on the cookie cutter class. So it's an instance based on a specific class. So an object always uh, is of the type of the class that it was created from. So let's say we have this class here. We might use that to create five different objects. Now the class is going to have a class name and each object is going to have its own specific name that refers to it. So name one, this one might have name five, right? These names allow us to make changes to the specific objects. So for instance, if these were gingerbread men, I might put raisin buttons on this one and then I might put um, smarty buttons on this one. Okay, so let's look at a example. Imagine that we want to create a class for a triangle. So to do this, we use the words public, and that's to say that other people can use this class, the keyword class to say that we're creating a class, and then the name. So this is going to be for a triangle, so the class name is going to be triangle. And then we have open curly brace and way down at the bottom we have closed curly brace. And everything that is going to be in this area is going to be our class description. Okay, so what is inside of a class description? There are three major components. The first one is a constructor. And a constructor is actually a special type of method that tells you how to make a new triangle object. So, how to make one. And it does, it actually creates the triangle for us. Okay, so that's a specific type of method that you always have to have in a class. The other thing that you're going to have is some fields. And these are often also maybe called properties fields, properties, and this is the information that is about objects of this class. So when you have triangle objects, you probably need to know things like the fill color of the triangle, the line color, maybe the line width, things like that. Maybe it's X position, maybe it's Y position. So you're going to have all these fields that tell you about um, the properties of any particular triangle object. And the last thing that classes have are a set of methods. And these are the actions that you can take on objects of this class. So methods for the triangle class might be things like how to uh, draw the triangle, how to shrink the triangle, how to move the triangle, anything like that. And they can operate on objects of this class triangle. Okay, so that's how you create a class description. It's going to have those three major components, the constructor, the fields, and the methods.
So three major components. Now, if we wanted to actually create a triangle object, how do we go about doing this? This is what the code looks like. First of all, we're creating something, so we need to know what the type of the thing is that we're creating. And of course, it's a triangle. So just the way when we were creating an integer, we would start and say int, we're creating a triangle object. So we start and we say triangle. Now we need to give a name for the triangle object we're creating. So I'm going to call this one um, T1 for my first triangle. It's going to be called T1. And then we say equals new triangle. And this new triangle is actually a method call to the constructor. And that says, build us one, make us one, give me one right now. So this gives us a triangle object. Now we can create lots of triangle objects. So let's make another one. So now we're going to make triangle and we're going to call this one T2. And every object has to have a different name. So equals new triangle. Okay, so now we have two triangle objects. And again, this calls the constructor and gives us one. So we've got two of them and we can do different things with each of them. But one of the questions you might want to be asking is, what does this look like in the computer's memory? How is this stored? And that's a really important thing to understand right off the bat. So let's draw a picture. Let's imagine that this is the computer's memory. And how is this all stored? So the first thing to note is that we have a box to store the object name T1. Okay, And what T1 stores is actually a pointer to where that triangle object is in memory. Think about it this way. Objects have um, could be any size, right? The triangle object has all these fields and methods. You could have other objects that have many, many, many fields and methods, and they could take up lots of space in memory. Objects can take up sort of any variable amount of memory. So we create the T1 triangle object over here. So this is a triangle object. And this little piece of memory that is right here actually points to this triangle object. It just tells us where to go in memory to find this particular object. Now, we've actually created two triangle objects. So here's another one, triangle object, okay? And this one is actually referred to by T2. So it is actually this equal sign that causes this T1 to be pointing to this triangle object. It's because we've created this triangle object, so this new triangle that creates this, the equal sign creates the link, and this is the name. Okay, so we now have these two different triangles and we can actually call some of the triangle methods that are in the triangle class on one of these triangle objects. So just as an example, Imagine that we wanted to call the shrink method on this triangle object, T1. We would do that by typing something like T1.shrink. And that would make the triangle object T1 smaller. But it wouldn't affect the triangle object T2. When you call a method on an object, it only affects that object, not all the other objects that are based on the same class. And this is the power of object-oriented programming. You can create lots of objects that have lots of similar properties and characteristics because they're all created from the same class, but then you can do separate things with each individual object. Okay, I hope that helped you get a good overview of classes and objects, and um, we'll see you next time.